So if we're focusing on the work done by the gas, these two would be equal. Um, we could have just written them into our formula here. The same formula will tell you either the work done by the gas or the heat. Because the work done by the gas is equal to heat, just like over here. Here, delta U is equal to Q because the work was constant. Well, here the work is equal to the heat because delta U is constant. You might as well have that as a separate entry. So there is no special little formula with the capital C over here, because we don't need it. We can just use this formula for work for either the, the Q or the W. Something that comes up a lot on tests is, notice that there's basically four points here. We've got, <clears throat> say, P initial, V initial, and P final, V final. And oftentimes they'll give you three of these points and ask you for the fourth one. So it might give you P initial, V initial, and V final, and, uh, and P final, and ask you for V final. Well, how can we figure those out? Using uh, PV equals MIT. That's right. How would we use that? What's the simplest way to use that, since we don't really care about the temperature and N here, and we might not be given those in the problem? Well, what you just wrote there, that the P initial Right, good. We can't use this formula directly because we might not be given the temperature. We might be told it's isothermal, but we might not be told what, what the temperature is being held constant at. But because the temperature is constant, and the number of moles is almost always constant because it's a closed container, so no gas can get in or out, well, since this side is a constant, P times V must be a constant. So these two things are equal. Well, this is oftentimes, again, used on the exams. Oftentimes, again, they'll give you three of these points, and they expect you know, to use this equation to find the, the last point. Let's add that to our list of equations, then. I was already using this idea when I was writing this form of the equation here, when I was saying that you could use either P initial times V initial or P final times V final. But we'll write that as a separate equation. Now, of course, I'm writing that down here because this only works for isothermal processes. If, it, if the temperature wasn't constant, these wouldn't have to be equal because the temperature wouldn't have to be constant anymore. All right, I think those are the equations you need for isothermal processes. Good. All right. Oh, just to make, point out one more thing, um, we know this is a general formula for delta U that always works. Well, what would this formula give us for an isothermal process? For an isothermal process, what would happen when we try to use this formula? Um, what would we plug in for delta T for an isothermal? Zero. Yeah, isothermal means delta T is zero, and that would give us what we've already figured out, that delta U is zero. That just reinforces that the internal energy is very closely tied to the temperature. Something else I should remind you of that I talked about in the other series of videos, don't confuse heat and temperature. This is not a zero heat process. It's a, hero, it's a zero temperature change process. They're definite, a lot of people would look at this and say, oh, no change in temperature, so Q is zero. Mm -hmm. Well, no. Um, it's delta U that's zero because temperature and heat are two different things. Now we can talk about a zero heat exchange. process, and there's a name for that that you would definitely be tested on. What's the name for a process with no heat exchange? I'm not sure. That would be adiabatic. Okay. And this is definitely one of the ones that you'd uh, be expected to have in your cheat sheet or have memorized for the exam. Adiabatic turns out to mean zero heat exchange. I'm not sure where that name, name comes from, uh, but uh, zero heat exchange. Those are also downward sloping curves. What can we say about Q here for an adiabatic process? Right. That's the whole definition. Mm -hmm.
And again, we'd like to have a way, uh, so obviously we're not using these formulas for Q anymore. These are just for constant volume or constant pressure. Clearly, we'd like to have a way to figure out the area under this curve. Well, again, because this is a curve and not a line, we need to use calculus. So the textbook has uh, derived a formula using calculus, which we can just put in our cheat sheet and memorize. Or I haven't memorized it. Well. <laughs> so the work done by the gas here is P initial V initial minus P final V final over gamma minus one. It's a little hard to see my scripts, subscripts here, but these are I's for initial. P initial, V initial, minus P final, V final. The textbook actually just says, called this P1, V1, and P2, V2. Maybe that would have been a little bit better, but anyway. P1, V1 minus P2, V2 over gamma minus one. So this is the symbol gamma down here. And if you, uh, if you do a little calculus, you can prove this formula. But we'll just look it up. Whereas this was the formula for isothermal processes. Uh, well, that raises the question of what gamma is. Gamma is C sub P divided by C sub V. C sub P divided by C sub V. Remember, this was the molar specific heat for constant pressure, and this is the molar specific heat for constant volume. Well, how would you figure these out? Uh, well, we know that you can figure out C sub P from C sub V, and we can figure out C sub V from this. So we can put it all together and figure out this. So once again, even though this is originally defined for constant volume, and this is defined for constant pressure, they also have uses for other processes. In particular, we can use this for any type of process for delta U, and gamma appears in an adiabatic process, which is not constant volume or constant pressure, but it just so happens that this gamma term is the ratio of these two molar specific heats. A couple other things that uh, are possible to prove. We could prove that P initial, V initial gamma equals P final, V final gamma. Compare that to this little equation down here. So you don't want to get these two confused. We knew this was easy to prove because it comes from PV equals NRT, holding T constant. This is a lot harder to prove, so we'll just memorize this. Okay. Uh, this also has a gamma term in it again. P1, V1 to the gamma equals, so the gamma is only on the V, not on the P, by the way. Okay. Uh, equals P final times V final to the gamma power. And this is an equation that you're likely to use on an oh, exam again. That's sorry. to a power. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. It's hard to read the board a little bit. So this is, P initial times V initial raised to the gamma power okay. equals P final times V final raised to the gamma power. But again, it's only the volume that's being raised to the power. Got it. Not the pressure. Now again, this is a formula that you're likely to need on the exam because very commonly, again, they'll give you three of these numbers. They'll give you maybe P initial, V final, and V final and ask you for V initial. Well, now we know how to work out that problem for either an isotherm or an adiabat. For an isotherm, we use the simple formula that we could prove from the ideal gas law. And for an adiabat, we can use this more complicated formula that we're just memorizing. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, this is a good way to find the extra other, it's a good way to find a, a coordinate on the PV curve that you might not have known. So we'll just have this written down. There's one more formula in the book that I'll write down for completeness, although it doesn't seem to come up on tests a lot. You could also say, T initial times V initial to the gamma minus one equals T final V final to the gamma minus one. T initial times V initial raised to the gamma minus one equals T final times V final raised to the gamma minus one. 
I haven't actually seen a test question that involved that, but for completeness, we can put that in. But this comes up a lot on exams. Why doesn't this come up as much? Because it involves temperature, which is not in the PV graph, whereas this is used a lot because it has the variables that are in the PV graph. Okay, so now we're uh, nearing the end of putting together um, all the different notes that you want to have here. So it would be good to put um, this kind of information all in your cheat sheet. Again, these are the two formulas that are always true for any process. Even though this is, has C sub V, you can use it to figure out the delta U for any process. And then in each of these columns, I have formulas that are only true for specific processes. 